Hi guys, it's Leo from MediaWay here. Hope you're all well. We've got another exciting Blender tutorial for you today. We're going to create an epic sci-fi scene inspired by the new movie Dune. We're going to cover using displacement. We're going to cover using the sun disk from Blender to light the scene. And we're also going to cover importing characters from Mixamo to add human scale to the scene as well. It's going to be a wild ride. Let's get started. <laughs> Start by pressing A to select everything, X to delete everything. We'll add the sun disk to add some light to our scene first of all. So if you click on the world settings then colour. And then next to colour there's a little dot and if you click on sky texture that'll add in the Nishita sun disk sky texture. We're going to be working in cycles so swap rendering engine to cycles. Uh, make sure it's set to GPU compute if you're not using a Mac and switch adaptive sampling on and I think we can take this down to 64 for now. Uh, we'll also while we're here just in the color management settings just where it says look change it to high contrast that just gives the image a bit more punch. Okay so we're going to add a plane first. This plane is going to be the sand. Select the plane, press S to scale and then type in 200. Then control A to apply all the transforms. This should make the plane 400 meters wide. If you're struggling to see the edge of the plane, you'll need to change your view settings just in your, num in your bar here. We'll set it to 5,000 meters so there's no clipping. So we're going to add a sand dune texture next to this and we're gonna do this in two ways. Firstly, we're gonna use displacement to actually move the mesh of the plane into a sand dune shape and then we're going to adjust the material of the sand dune plane to give it that sandy look. So we'll start off with, we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier. We set it simple and we'll set this to 6 and this one to 8 or to 7, let's check it to 7. This basically is going to give some extra geometry to the plane so the displace modifier works. We're going to add the Displace modifier next. We're going to click New Texture. Uh, I'm just going to set these up quickly while we're here. The strength needs to be set to 20. And we're going to adjust the Displacement Texture properties with this little menu below. We're going to set the type to Voronoi Texture. You can see this instantly gives a texture to the plane. We're going to set the intensity to 2 and then the size to 75 and instantly we're starting to get something that looks a bit like this. So right click on this and shade it smooth and then because we've got these little sort of flat bits at the top we're just going to change this under where it says colours just going to uncheck where it says clamp. We're just going to soften the ridges of the sand dune by adding another subdivision modifier on top. And we'll just set this to, we'll set it to two in the viewport and four for the render. Okay, let's just switch into rendered mode. Okay, we've got some instant sand dune going on there. I'm just gonna turn down the strength of the sun disk. Right, now we're going to give this sand dune a sandy texture. So if you go to your material setting, add a new material, we'll call it sand. Then go to the shading tab. We're gonna set the base color to a sandy color. So just pick an orangey color that you, takes your fancy. We're going to just put the roughness up a bit as well because sand usually doesn't reflect like a car. And just to give some extra texture to the sand, we're going to add in a bump node. And we'll just connect this to the normal. And we're also going to add a noise texture. So that's Shift A to add. And then connect the colour to the height information down here. Okay, nothing's changed so far. Let's just tweak these settings a little bit. We'll set the scale to 2, the detail to 16, and the distortion to minus 5. 
the roughness to one. Right, you can see now, it's quite subtle, just getting a little bit of texture now on the sand, just to break it up a little bit, make it look more realistic. This is a good point to save your work. So control S to save. Back in the layout window, we're just gonna adjust the sun a little bit. Let's just have a look at these settings. We'll make the sun disk a bit bigger, 2.5 degrees should be fine. Um, we'll adjust the sun rotation in a minute when we find a good place for the camera. But we're just going to add a little bit of air. This basically just gives a bit, bit of density to the atmosphere. We'll reduce the dust down a little bit. And we'll add a bit more ozone to kind of give a slightly bluer texture to the sky. Just have a look around the sand dune for a nice spot to put the camera. Okay, I'm gonna add my camera here. So shift A, add your camera. Control Alt, number pad zero to put in the right space. We're gonna make this, instead of a portrait orientation, we're gonna have this landscape, so it's more like a poster. So if you go to your output properties page, we're gonna make it 1000 pixels wide by 1500 pixels high to give us this sort of rectangular shape. If you press shift and tilde, we can just move this up. So I just want more or less half the frame to be land and half to be sky. I'm just gonna move the sun disk round. So we just rotate the sun disk until we can see it in the frame. You might need to zoom out for this. Just going to tweak the camera position. I'm going to move down a little bit. I'm just going to move the sun disk down a little bit by changing the elevation just so it's down a little bit further. Something like that looks good. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to add some more sand dunes in the distance. So we can easily do this. If you press 7 for top view, keep an eye on where your camera is in the shot. We're going to do Shift D to duplicate this, and we're going to just move it over here. R to rotate, Z to whiz it around a bit, and we'll press S to scale. Let's go back to camera view with zero. Just going to rotate this with Z, maybe a bit on the Y as well. I want to add some more sand dunes into the distance. I don't want them to be too dark. G to grab Z to move down. I might increase the sun elevation slightly. Just to give a little bit more light to the scene. That's better. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is add a planet from Blender Kit. So press N to pull it beside the menu, then press search for Blender Kit on the right, it's just down here. Then type in planet. and make sure the little eyeball's on so you can see the results. And then this one here, Sci-Fi Sand Planet, let's just drag that into the scene. Okay, press your eyeball to make those results disappear again. Um, the other thing we need to do before I do that, let's just go to the camera and just set it so where it says clip start and end, we want the end to be 5,000 meters as well, because otherwise you won't be able to see the planet. Select your sci-fi sand planet again, press select hierarchy by right clicking. Scale, type in 50. And there it is, it's hiding at the back. Right, press seven for top view. Let's just grab that and we'll move it over here for now. I'm gonna scale S to scale a bit more. Let's get it a bit bigger. Right, this is made up of several layers. So if you want to delete some of the outer layers, press X to delete, X to delete again. And then I think that one is the last one yet. So back to camera view, zero. G to grab. Let's move the planet up here. So it's kind of about a quarter of the planets in the picture, something like that. I'm going to add a bit of illumination to the planet. So if you go to the shading tab, I 
And on the planet, what we're going to do, we're going to cheat a little because I want this to fade into the sky a bit more. So the quickest way I found to do that is to set the emission color to a blue color. So use the picker, something like that. And then the emission strength to 0.2. And that just gives us a little bit of pushing the planet back in the picture. So then kind of not quite so dark and dominant. The next thing we're going to do is add a character from Mixamo. So fire up your web browser, go to Google and search for Mixamo. Click Mixamo. You'll need to log in or sign up for free. It's, um, it's a completely free thing to do. First thing you want to do is choose a character. So if you click on the characters tab at the top, um, I just chose someone that looked like an adventurer. There's lots of different characters to choose from. I think the one I chose was this one, Akai e Espiritu. And then click on animations and search for stairs. Then click on ascending stairs. Then click on download. In fact, you set it to in place, that'd be a bit better. And then click on download. You can leave all these settings as default. Once you've downloaded your figure from Mixamo, go to File, Import, FBX. Find where you've downloaded it to, and then click Import FBX. Okay, if like me, you can't see it anywhere. Let's swap to a different mode. You press the period key on your number pad, you'll see it. So this one's hidden underneath the sand dunes. So you just press G to grab, Z to move on the Z axis. And there we are, we can see our little person now. It can be quite tricky to place this in the scene. So I'm just gonna press S to scale and just make it a bit bigger. We'll switch back into rendered view again. G, Z, okay, I'm gonna have to bring I'm going to press 7 on the number pad to see the view from above. I'm just going to click so I can see where the camera is. So the camera is over here, just in the middle of this sand dune. Armature, I'm just going to grab it, move it a bit closer towards the camera. Go back into camera view. G, Z, and up. There she pops. Okay. So I'm just going to switch the eyeball, switch the armature off. So you can actually see from this that we've got several frames of animation. So what we're going to do, I want to turn the figure away from the camera. With the armature selected, press R to rotate, Z to rotate on the Z axis, and just rotate it so she's facing the other way. Frame 16 looks good. G to grab, Z to move on the Z axis. She's going to pop her down until she's just touching in the sand. So we've got a nice leading line there from the shadow, kind of leading your eye into the picture. We're going to add it in a volume cube. So seven for top view. So kind of look roughly in the middle of your plane, shift right click to put the 3D cursor down, shift A to add, mesh cube, S to scale 200 to scale 200. In fact, let's just make it a little bit bigger, rotate it a little bit that way and scale on the Z axis because we don't need it to be that high. G to grab, Z to move up. And what we'll do, we'll change the material on this. So we'll have a new material. We'll call it volu volume fog. We don't need a surface, so you can actually remove that. But we do need volume, so we'll choose principled volume. The density is way too high for a start. So we're going to try 0 0.001. And now press zero to go back to camera view. You can just see we're getting a bit of a nice haze now going on. If you haven't saved recently, control S, save. We're going to go back into the compositor. Uh, use nodes. Right, what we're going to do we're going to render the image F12 to render. And what we're going to do, we're going to add some glow around the sun to make it a bit more atmospheric. So we're going to add Shift A, search for the viewer. 
and we'll pop it there and we'll pop the image into the viewer. So if you do this shift and right click drag, you kind of draw a cross over these and it joins those two up. It's quite just a neat little trick to neaten it up. And we're going to add in shift A, we're going to search for a glare node. Pop it in there. We don't want the streaks, we want fog glow. That's maybe a touch too bright. So just reduce the mix down to somewhere about there. And that's it, we're finished. F12 for a final render. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you really enjoyed that. You could definitely extend this scene further if you wanted to. You could add animation to the character, we could add more sand particles to swirl around the scene, adding atmosphere. And you could also mix it up, changing the colour of the sky, the planet, the sand, whatever you like really to make an epic sci-fi scene. If you've got any questions or ideas, please pop them in the comments box below. And also, if you've done some sci-fi work based on this tutorial, please link it to me. I love to see your work. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.